Hi, I'm Lance. And this is Matt. And this is the Troubled Makers. Alright, and today we're playing plastic parts with copper using a process called electroplating. Electroplating is a process that uses electric current and electrolytic solution to plate or coat an object on an electrode. Uh, electroplating is also known as electrodeposition. Cool. Yeah, totally. In order to uh, plate or coat an object, uh, the item must be conductive. And uh, we will be coating non-conductive 3D prints today uh, made of uh, plastic and showing you how to make them conductive for electroplating. We will show you some methods on how to achieve this for your 3D prints. So let's get started. Let's go. Uh, in order to electroplate an object, it has to be conductive. However, our 3D prints that we're using are not conductive, so we're going to have to use a special kind of paint in order to make them conductive. Yeah, to electroplate an object, uh, you're going to need a power supply. Uh, we're going to use a 6 volt camping battery. And you're also going to need to find a source metal. In our case, it's going to be copper from a computer heat sink. And you're going to connect that uh, source metal to the positive terminal or anode of the power supply. And uh, second, you're also going to need whatever object you want to electroplate. In our case, it's going to be these 3D printed medallions. And uh, you're going to go ahead and connect that to the negative terminal of your battery or power supply, also known as the cathode. Um, lastly, you're going to need an electrolytic solution uh, to put these both into once you have them connected. And we're going to be going with copper acetate since we're going to be using copper to coat our parts. Sounds good. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. Awesome. Okay, in order to get this project started, we're going to need a few items. And first and foremost is we need our conductive paint. I recommend MG Chemicals Super Shield. This is a nickel conductive coating. And it's a spray can. It works great. It's better than brushing on. It's not thick like some other methods where they recommend using some graphite powder and it's uh, very great for copper. Um, copper loves coating on nickel. So anyways, I'll have a link in the description where to get this. Next, some safety precautions, some gloves, maybe a mask, um, also perhaps some eyeglasses. Not a bad idea considering we are going to be working with some acids. And another recommendation would be, doesn't need to be there, but a multimeter is a great idea. Switch it over to continuity mode, check to see if your part's conductive, switch it over to DC voltage mode, make sure you're actually getting power from your power supply on the parts where it's needed. Which brings in the next point, a power supply. You're going to need either a battery, in this case you could pick up a camping lantern battery at Walmart for about $2.50 and it's a 6 volt battery. Or you could use a desktop power supply, which is what I ended up going with. And basically, this is uh, applies variable voltage. I find that anywhere between four and seven volts seems to get the best results. Next, you're going to need some sort of copper, and you're going to end up uh, attaching the copper uh, to the positive lead, and that's going to be something like a recycled heat sink. Or what I found works really good is Chore Boy. It's a cleaning brush. And you can pick them at your local store, and they're just this little mesh copper. They wrap around the leads very well, and it just coats. It's beautiful. It's awesome. A wire brush, something you can kind of clean off any sort of um, finished product. This is going to give the copper its shine once you're done plating the object. Highly recommended. You can use sandpaper, but it's a bit too abrasive, I find. So, anyways, then you're going to need your electrolytic solution. In this case, copper acetate is what we're using. Since we're dissolving copper, we're coating something with copper, copper acetate is the way to go in this situation. And I'll have also a link for that in the description. So, looks like uh, these are the necessary supplies that we're going to need. So, let's get started. So, what you're going to want to do is shake it really well uh, when you're spraying the Super Shield nickel conductive coating or whatever brand you decide to go to and make sure you're outside well ventilated this stuff smells horrible I'm even wearing a mask and I can still smell it so um, do a couple of coats let it dry uh, check it uh, for conductivity make sure it is actually conducting and then uh, we'll go ahead and start plating it okay it looks like our part is ready to go 
it's all painted. I went a little heavy with some of the paint. Uh, that's always a problem that I have with certain things. But um, what you can see here is we could set our go ahead and set our multimeter to um, continuity mode. And it should beep if there's continuity. And we have definitely have continuity throughout this whole part. It is uh, totally conductive, so we are ready to coat. So, first things first, you need to attach your copper to your um, positive cable or anode, and then you're going to go ahead and set that into the bath just like that. Next you're going to attach your part to the negative lead or cathode and we're going to set the part in the solution over here. And then to start the process I'm going to start applying some current and try to get the voltage up anywhere between 5 and 6 volts and there's 5 volts and we're almost pulling about an amp so that's probably good for me now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to move this part around periodically um, you know make sure that everything's attached correctly so what you can do is although I know because my meter won't actually uh, it won't draw any current if there's not an actual electrical connection there but you can also if you're just curious you're using a battery or something like that you could go ahead and put your multimeter into um, DC power supply or voltage mode and you can just check that your part and your um, copper are, are indeed conducting. Mine's perfect. It's 5 volts, just what it says it is on here. And uh, yeah, I can already see it starting to get a little bit of, uh, of a copper sheen there. Oops. And if that happens, you're going to probably want to have like some wooden sticks or something to get your part out so you can reconnect it again. But let's go ahead and check back on this in just a little bit. So what I've been doing is I've been taking this stick and just kind of mixing it around, uh, flipping it over, moving the part around probably every three or four minutes maybe. Um, and we're just going to see how it looks in a, in a little bit here but I think as you can see already it's starting to really get a nice copper plating on it. Pretty exciting, sorry if I can get that to focus. So it's coming along quite well if you ask me. So we're going to just let it sit and just keep moving it around and agitating the uh, solution. And we're still hanging out about, you know, 4.8 volts or so. And uh, things are looking good so far. Okay, so uh, I've left it in for about an hour and a half or so. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off now. I think it's pretty well coated here. Try to retain, oh wow, look, it's just dripping copper. Uh, try to retain as much of the fluid as you can because you can reuse it. Uh, it coated really well. Um, it looks like some spots didn't quite coat exactly how I wanted them to. Maybe I didn't um, let the paint dry enough or something else first. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rinse off and see how our part looks. Okay, so we're going to rinse off the excess and just see what we got here. I feel like a lot of the material really built up uh, well uh, around it, so I'm pretty happy about that. But um, It's just hard to get it in the middle and it might just be the geometry of this or maybe I didn't let the paint dry or it kind of creeps from the end. So I might put this back in again later but I think for the sake of showing you guys how we uh, electroplate, I think that this will be good enough for now. Okay, so uh, 
So we're drying off our part. on it but as you can see uh, it's got a nice copper uh, shine to it I'm guessing that you can uh, you got to kind of polish it off to get the real metallic finish so what you do is you take something like a wire brush like this As you can see, as we start to go over it, it's starting to get a nice shine. Wow, it looks great. Yeah, once again, I'm not sure why the middle didn't really coat that well. The outer areas did, so who knows? Maybe I need to leave it in longer. Wow, that is so cool. All right. Wow, it looks pretty amazing. Uh, got a nice copper uh, look to it and uh, of course with a little bit more coating uh, I'm sure you could uh, improve that effect and uh, Yeah, it looks really really awesome. This thing is uh, Very cool how this medallion turned out a couple of final thoughts on this process um, Definitely helps to be closer to the 6 volt range and definitely make sure that you have uh, enough width and uh, just be patient. So it's really important that you're just, you know, keep coming back to it, you keep stirring it on, and that you just really take your time with it. Overall though, you can get a really cool, amazing effect and it's, it's definitely uh, worth doing on some of your prints, especially if you wanna get sort of a, a cool uh, sort of metal look or make it look patinaed or even do like sort of like a steampunk sort of look to it but uh hopefully you guys learned something and enjoyed this video if you guys have any questions at all feel free to ask in the comments and i'll be posting links to all of the materials that you need to do this yourself thanks for watching